Hi there, welcome back to more Mendelian genetics problem solving. This video here is going to be focusing on probability, like the product rule and the sum rule. So a cross is made between two plants differing in four independently assorting gene loci to produce an F1, or fat the first generation, which is then self-fertilized. If the capital letters represent alleles with a completely dominant phenotypic effect, then we have some questions. Now it asks, the first question is, how many different genotypes are possible in F2? So the thing, the trick about this problem is, this generation you see right here, this is called the parent generation, or P1. What the problem is asking for is F2. So to figure out F2, first we need to figure out F1. Now whenever you have a cross between something like this, where it's completely dominant, homozygous dominance everywhere for every single trait, and homozygous recessive for every single trait, that tells us that the, 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 the only possible offspring are going to be heterozygous. And to prove this, let's say we crossed it, let's, let's just do a monohybrid cross with these, these two traits here. Big A, big A, and little a, little a. Doing a Punnett square of this, you can see that all of the offspring only have one type of genotype. It's heterozygous big A, or and little a. So because we know all of the offspring all have this particular type of genotype, they have big A, little a, big A, big B, I'm sorry, big B, little b, big C, little c, and big D, little d. It mentions that the F1, the thing you see here, this particular plant, is then self-fertilized. That tells me that it's being crossed by it or to itself. So now it's asking how many different types of genotypes are possible in F2. To figure this out, we're going to be using the product rule and the, the fact that this is all they mentioned was independent assortment. So the thing, the first step we're going to be taking is crossing the heterozygous parts here of one of the traits. So let's do AA crossed with another AA. So how many different types of genotypes do we see in this one? Well, we have one. These two are the same, and this is a new one. So three different types of genotypes for this, this particular cross here. Now the idea is you multiply this by um, the amount of traits. Because notice that if we did the same cross with a big B, little b, and over here, big B, little b, we would still get another three different types of genotypes. So we have three, and we're multiplying it by another three to, to, to account for the B here. Then we do it for C, because this, the big C and the little c are going to be crossed with the other big C and little c, giving you three other different types of genotypes, and then do it again for D. And this would give you the total amount of different types of genotypes. So first off, three times three is nine, nine times nine is 81. So there's 81 different types of genotypes. What proportion of the F2 will be homozygous dominant for all of the genes? So homozygous dominant is equivalent to like, like AA. Well, if you do the Punnett square again, you'll notice that there, there is a one fourth ratio. See in this Punnett square, there's only one genotype that's homozygous dominant, and there's four possibilities, which means there's a one fourth proportion of genotypes that, that are actually gonna be homozygous dominant when you cross the big A, little a, with another big A, little a. So similarly, because we're doing this four times total with the B and the C and the D, we're going to be doing one fourth, multiply one fourth, four times. So another way to do that is just to put this to the four, one fourth to the power of four. As the same thing as doing one fourth, multiply one fourth, multiply one fourth, all the way to four. So if you actually did the math here, it would be one over 256. That is the proportion of F2 that are actually going to be homozygous dominant for all of the genes. So the next question is, what proportion of the F2 would have the A, B, C, D phenotype? So it's saying the A, B, C, D phenotype. So all being capitalized like this. So to have this phenotype, you can either be a heterozygous or you can be homozygous dominant. Each of these are going to have the dominant phenotype. So the question is asking, what proportion of the F2 are going to be having this type of phenotype? To save myself the, the, um, the effort of making a Punnett square, I know that there's a 3 to 1 ratio of expression of phenotype whenever you cross two heterozygous individuals like this. So that means there's a 3 fourth chance of expressing the dominant trait. And that's going to be among all of them. So that means you can do our little trick again and put this to the exponent of 4. And if you did the math, 3 to the power of 4 is 81 and four to the power of four will be 256. 
Okay, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask in the comment section below, and I'll try to get back to you as uh, soon as possible. And of course, I do hope you're having a fantastic day.